What's going on? My name is Praetorian. Welcome back to another episode on the Guild Rock server. This is actually my, well, not my third time recording this. Um, I have apparently screwed up my settings in OBS, so my recordings are all janky. Uh, and I'm just not going to put you through super grainy videos. So here we go with attempt number three. And hopefully this will work out just fine for us. Um, so I have uh, done a ton of work here. I promised you in the last episode that I would work on our uh, quote unquote starter home and I have done that and I had a bunch of build footage that I wanted to share with you just so you could see the the uh, the process a little bit and I uh, filmed my very first time lapse on the channel that I thought came out pretty good but you know here we are <laughs> so instead I'm just going to walk you through what I've done so you can kind of take a look and get an update even if you can't see the build process and uh, I hope you enjoy it let's go take a look all right, we are down on our paths, and you've seen these before. I built this path, I don't know, a couple episodes ago, but uh, obviously I have done a ton of detail work. If you've seen my videos in the past, you know how much I love coarse dirt. It just adds so much to the terrain, so there's a ton of coarse dirt sprinkled about. We've got some little rocks, uh, dead bushes. We've added uh, ground lighting, so no more, well... There's still torches, but not around the path. The patch is the patch. The path is more or less torch free. Um, we've added some bushes, some little boulders like this guy here, just to add a little bit of something, something to terrain. Uh, we've got a few of those kind of scattered about here, there, another one here. Uh, not a ton, but they're definitely out and about. So take a look at the terrain. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, like I said, coarse dirt's one of my favorite blocks. Uh, I want to know what you think. What is your favorite block to terrain with? So from the path, we walk over to our front door and you can definitely see it already. We've done an absolute ton of work on our starter home. This place is looking good. Now I haven't done all the detailing. It's really just the basic shape of it. I need a roof, I need an interior, so on and so forth. Uh, this corner here, I have done more detailing than anywhere else. We've got sort of mud, we've got some smooth basalt, some moss mixed in around the bottom. And we're going to continue that detailing around the entire uh, exterior walls. And that will kind of... Christmas chicken. Sorry, Christmas chicken. That will sort of bring the build to life a little bit. It'll look, make it look like it's, you know, lived in rather than just sort of you know, flat walls that were just constructed yesterday. Now, I do still have a lot of work to do. I don't have any of the little columns uh, on this side and on the back that I've got around the other side, the front and the inside, these guys here. Uh, so I've got to add those and, um, you know, the detailing and, and whatnot. Finish terraforming <laughs> this upper layer here, which is not done yet, but the front is looking really good. So we got that going for us. And sort of as we move around the back, you can see this wall is particularly flat, um, but that's because I don't know entirely what I'm going to do with it yet. So if we kind of go through the front door here, I think what I want to do with that back wall is have our workstations here. Maybe I'll make like a, a little forge and sort of workshop back here that we can utilize for all of our crafting needs. We'll have an entrance into the house on each side of the workstation area, one there, one here. This will lead into these four uh, sort of corners that have the most room. Now we do have actually quite a lot of room in here, but it's not really enough to have a, a decent space for a larger storage system. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is right here in this corner, I'm gonna have a stairway down and that will go down into sort of a sub level where we can have our storage room, storage system sort of thing, and maybe incorporate a couple farms in there. Um, Barnes, I'm sorry, not Barnes, Benny and Akata Wolf have been doing a ton of farms. I'll show you that in a few minutes along with our a villager trading hall. There's actually something that I learned, something that those two taught me, and I'm going to show it to you because it's really awesome, and I think that you guys will be able to utilize it in your own worlds. But that'll come up. For now, um, right here in this sort of foyer area, I think I'm going to do some tiny little like gardens in these four sections here, maybe some trees, bushes, uh, flowers, kind of plants, kind of thing just to kind of spruce up the inside so that when you walk in, you've got your gardens uh, looking all nice. You can relax when you get home from a nice hard day of, you know, 
mining and crafting and whatnot. Um, and yeah, I think it's gonna, I think it's really gonna come to life. I think it's gonna look good. Hell, I think it kind of looks good already, right? I think it's really coming along, especially from the last time when you guys saw it, when it's just sort of a couple pillars and not much else. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your opinion, any feedback, any thoughts, ideas, uh, definitely throw them my way. We'll see if we can incorporate some stuff in here. Let's go take a look at what Benny and Akata Wolf have been up to. So this here is Akata Wolf's area, uh, and he has an absolute ton going on. We've got a, um, th this is actually an AFK wood farm. I didn't even know you could do this. He explained the mechanic of this, uh, <laughs> and I'm not really sure that I understand it, but it looks like this, um, so you get a sapling under here, it grows, the pistons push the wood, and because the leaves can't generate, it turns immediately back into a sapling. So you don't actually have to replant a sapling every time. It just kind of re regenerates, I guess. It's pretty insane. I don't know. I, I didn't even know it was a thing. He just built this absolutely massive cactus farm. I guess this will get you about a stack of cactus an hour. And as you know, cactus is pretty slow. Uh, to grow so it's quite a lot of cactus i have no idea what we're gonna do with all the cactus it looks like he's auto smelting some for green dye and then using the other side for just some bone meal so uh there's a lot going on there oh it looks like it's actually backed up a little bit over here we've got a zero tick kelp farm which is just absolutely cranking away uh also using that for very loud machine gun uh, bone meal farming, I guess it seems to be working pretty well, except that maybe I hope this sand isn't from it breaking. I hope that's not a thing. I guess we'll see. I'm sure he'll let me know. And then this beautiful hallway that he's constructed for his uh, uh, bulk storage system. And we're kind of using this for the Roman guild as a whole, which is super, super nice of a cattle wolf to construct for us. It's looking absolutely amazing. Dude, you're doing a great job if you're watching. All right, let's take a look at this trading hall down here. This is um, this is sort of Benny's project, and it's coming out really, really good. Now, what I wanted to show you is a mechanic that I wasn't aware existed, but apparently it's a bedrock thing. So we've got the trading hall constructed around this zombie spawner, and that's for a reason. So when the zombie spawner produces a zombie villager and the villager dies, discounts get applied. And that happens to any villager within 16 blocks. So all of these villagers, none of them have been zombie cured. These discounts are strictly from the zombie villagers dying, which I think is, I mean, that's incredible. So if you find yourself a zombie spawner in your world, definitely build your trading hall right around it. Cause that is, that is super handy. So we've got all kinds of farms down in this area as well. We've got like a melon and pumpkin farm over here. Looks like a sugarcane farm over here. We've got an iron farm. We've got the villager trading. I mean, just a ton of stuff going on. And then this actually has a second level down underneath where we've got, <laughs> that zombie's trying to get the clerics, our cleric villagers. Um, so we can use those for like redstone and XP bottles and stuff like that. So just an absolute ton. These guys are absolutely going crazy with these farms. It's fantastic. I'm loving it. I actually just had to use that villager trading farm for um, BSP needed a couple shulker boxes of quartz. So I used the trading farm for a lot of it. I ended up actually filling the shulker boxes mostly from the nether because it felt lo a little bit faster, you know, hanging out with a bunch of villagers all day. It's not fun. doesn't feel like you're doing a ton of stuff. So I went into the nether, collected uh, a ton of quartz and some extra nether rack that or nether right rather that I'll probably end up using for I don't know decorations around the house or something like that, uh, but we'll see. So while I was in the shopping district dropping off the shulker boxes at Benny's mailbox, I checked my own mailbox and found I've got a couple Christmas gifts myself. Uh, one is a diamond block from Scotty. Scotty, thank you so much if you're watching. Really appreciate it, dude. That's super helpful. We've got 20 Christmas iron blocks from Joe Buffalo. Joe, you are the man. Really appreciate you, dude. And 64 diamonds. Now, these diamonds are a little bit of a mystery. These weren't labeled at all. It just looks like somebody maybe, I don't know, dropped off. Or maybe multiple, multiple people dropped off a few diamonds. But either way, whoever you are, you are awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. 
So this episode is going to be a little bit short today. I'm really sorry about but that, but as I said, the footage that I recorded was just, it was terrible. I, I couldn't use that. I couldn't have you guys sit through that. It was really bad. So you get this footage instead, which I think is a little bit better, a um, little bit faster pace, sure, and you didn't get to see the build process, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed it either way. Uh, we're going to end the video over here with our Christmas chicken. Um, I really want to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas if you celebrate. If you do not, have fantastic holidays. Enjoy your day. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content. Uh, hopefully <laughs> with more building in it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.